Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ruffle Rowlett and welcome to a brand new rumor video. Today we're going to take a look at a few new rumors that have cropped up as well as some old ones and talk about what they might mean and if they are real, fake, etc. So sit back, relax and grab yourself a beverage and also answer today's question of the day, which is going to be right here, which is what is the best Pokemon rival in your opinion? If your comment is the best one and maybe has the most upvotes or the one I like the most, you may be featured at the end of this video and the last video's comment was this one. So thank you for leaving that comment. I appreciate it. And let's move on to the next subject, which of course is the rumors. So, what rumors do we have today? Well, basically, we have a plethora of rumors to say the least, okay? Uh, we've got this brand new one that's suggesting there's going to be a Pokemon Presents tomorrow, I think, as far as what is it saying. Um, I could be wrong, like, I don't know, it's, it's all just a bunch of strange stuff. But I thought we'd take a look at it anyways, see what it's all about, and talk about all these rumors. So, let's get started with this one, shall we? So, first things first, this rumor starts off saying, uh, Presents tomorrow at 10 EST. Getting Presents tomorrow at 10 a.m. EST, 7 a.m. PST. Reason for delay has been approval for last few promotional artworks. Presents or review. Opens with new BDSP trailer. Trailer shows clips of Eterna, Pastoria, Heart Home, Snowpoint Gyms, Puzzle slash Gym layouts carried over from Platinum. Okay. To be fair, this does sound like what a trailer should look like for these games, right? Because, well, where is the trailer, right? That's the thing we've been waiting for for ages now. But this seems to kind of align with what we should be expecting from a trailer such as this, right? We continue on. So, uh, Team Galactic is featured, shows flashes of fights with each commander in their battle models, as well as clips of various galactic locations, which would make sense as there are quite a few. The mural in Celestial, uh, Celestic Town looks sick. Well, okay. No mention of Megas and G-Maxes. Underground is shown with updated mining game, plus new online feature showcase where players can connect to sell slash trade items, with each other. That would actually be insane adding some sort of like almost trading system to the game, but what would the purpose be of the items? Is there stuff to maybe put in a secret base? What kind of stuff? Underground now contains a bunch of items, so he does point out here. Uh, evolution stones, choice items, etc. Now that would actually be fair enough. I do hope it's like items you can put into like, you know, very rare items that, you know, some people may have, some people might not have, or maybe you have a certain thing that you, you know, certain amount of uh, something that you farmed a lot of, and you want to maybe like buy something else, you know, when somebody else like needs the thing you have. I think it will be a good way to kind of balance it out. Now, contest returning with cosplay Pikachu. Okay. We get general overview of gameplay, updated lighting slash colors in the overworld, preview of Palkia Dialga encounter at Spear Pillar. The cutscenes look cool. That is always a good thing. Camera pans over several areas, including Route 2, 100, uh, 213, the lakes, Hartholm City, and Amity Square, the Old Chateau, Sunny Shore City. Man, that's a lot of places. Bulk of BDSP segment is spent ex explaining new online features plus connectivity with Generation 8. Then they continue on saying that uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus connectivity only hinted. We're excited to show you the ways you can connect your adventures in past and present Sinnoh. That does sound like something that would say they would say though. Does sound like something they would say. Uh, po Pokemon Legends Arceus trailer is very instructional. Okay, that doesn't sound as much fun. Less of a trailer and more of a guided gameplay demo. Okay, that actually sounds pretty good though, because uh, I think that we need a gameplay demo. Introduces capture and combat systems. Frame issues seem to be solved. Other than uh, than aesthetic updates, there is no new info. So that's what they had for Legends Arceus according to this rumor. So I'm gonna be honest with you, this is the first rumor we're covering today. The other ones are unrelated to BDSP and Legends Arceus, they're more to do with like Generation 9 and stuff like that. But in this one in particular, I'm just a little bit torn about it, okay? I, I, I don't know about you guys, but it does seem a little bit strange, right? Um, it, like, they have announced nothing today. When I'm recording this video, it's almost 5 five p.m. my time, right? When I'm recording this video. This video will be posted two, three hours later from when I'm recording it. And the thing is, there has been nothing, right? There's been no information. There's been no, like, things said. But at the same time, there's always a chance that tomorrow, if it happens, it happens. Uh, but even if not, a lot of the points made here are kind of interesting points. And I do hope some of these things are true, like the inclusion of trading and selling items or selling and buying items from, like, other players. That will be fun. Uh, the inclusion of, like, you know, like a, a, dem a gameplay demo to watch. Uh, and I'm not talking about a gameplay demo that we actually get to play, but like a demo that they show off of gameplay of uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus would be great to see uh, sometime soon. And also, just in general, a lot of the stuff here actually sounds pretty like good. It sounds like stuff I want to see in the next trailer, but the problem is, where is that trailer? Well, we don't really know. A lot of people are speculating that maybe because of uh, past reasons and because of people complaining about the game so much and so much controversy, that they're just going to skip. 
just gonna skip doing trailers going forward that like too often, right? And just keep them once in a while, right? Which I think is a weird promotional strategy, but I think they just assume Pokemon is large enough that they don't really need to care. Um, my opinion was that because of Unite, they had to delay all their other stuff. And now that they just, this week, they just, what, like yesterday or today, sometime like last like last night, they basically released an update for Pokemon, uh, what do you call it, po new Pokemon Snap, which also requires its own attention. So I think what we're looking at here is that they are just taking their time okay they're just taking their time and we'll see what happens now as for this but, but you know potentially requiring oh my god look at me like a freaking hobo but either way like it could be a potential situation where like uh, how would you put it like legends rcs or like bdsp as well uh they might just be trying to keep them a bit back because they know they're going to be doing a lot of promotion going forward so they just kept them back so they could give attention to the other stuff like new snap update uh, to increase maybe more sales there, Unite and its update that also just dropped and stuff like that. And also on top of that, we did just get the announcement that Pokemon Go has a big summer update that's going to be basically like, you know, uh, including the legendaries or something. So a clutch of Pokemon, a Pokemon who have debuted in the last Sword and Shield arrive in Pokemon Go later this month. The game has teased a surprise for the uh, last big summer event. And indeed, this was not what fans were expecting. Pokemon Go features a few Galar region creatures already, but only forms and evolutions of existing Pokemon such as Zigzagoon and Panita. Now developer Nautic is rolling out more of the Pokemon's Generation 8, including the Signature Legendary. So yes, as seen in the above trailer, which if you go to the trailer here, if we open it up, um, it will just show you, and if we're just going to turn down the volume here, it just shows you like, you know, just a general trailer showing you like what Pokemon will show up and stuff like that. Uh, you know, Wooloo, you got Wooloo in there, you've got... Um, Grid Dunn, Squ Squavit, I think as well, obviously. Uh, but yeah, you just got like some of the Pokemon showing up in this trailer, including the Legendaries, uh, Zacian and Zamazenta as well. Point being that, you know, this needed to be announced as well. I think they wanted to put more attention, especially with the, like, the Pokemon Go 5th anniversary. And sorry about any background noise, by the way. Uh, it is extremely loud right now. Uh, but basically, like, it made sense that they wanted to take time on this subject, you know, these other subjects and these other games to just give those attention on their own before moving on to the big two, which are the big, big, big releases of this year. So yeah, but basically that was the rumor, the first rumor. We have still a bunch of stuff to talk about. We're only seven minutes into this video. We got lots to go. Uh, but that was the first thing. Then we do have like a rumor about generation nine, which we're gonna talk about. And also there has been a kind of thing that I forgot to recover a while back, which I will show here on the screen for you guys, which was a promotional thing that we did talk about a bit in yesterday's video. So do check out yesterday's video, which I will make sure to link right down below if you guys don't haven't seen it uh, here's the thumbnail just go check that video out um, basically I in that video talks a bit about this promotional thing but it was a Japanese promo for both BDSP and Legends Arceus that started circulating and it, basically what it just had was this right here a brochure or you know promo thing advertising Pokemon uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus in Japan and it's these two images as you can see this one right here and this one right here showing off some just general stuff but that's not really the, the stuff we're looking at. A Poke Expert posted this advertisement pamphlet for BDSP and Legends Arceus. While having no information outside of what we know, this is the first bit of advertisement seen for both games in Japan since announcement. So a hunch. I assume maybe Joe and others were right on the money. In that these two uh, things may be possibly, possible but not likely, BDSP and Legends Arceus promotion period are concurrent since both are releasing soon. Now that major uh, releases have released, the Pokemon company may start focusing on the main course, i.e. games releasing this holiday in early 2022. Now, this it mean presents or something? No, it doesn't. It does mean there is a slim, albeit very slim, chance we may see something like news for both games soon. Yes, this may be the first stepping stone, if you will. In any case, uh, take this as you will. You don't, uh, but don't go over your heads. Anyways, have a good Wednesday, and that's that. That was when Unite was about to release. You know about two weeks ago exactly, this is about your Unite's release, so it makes sense, right, uh, that they're slowly starting to churn out the promos and stuff, which is a little bit weird, okay, because the promos usually start around, what, like, May and June is when they usually start, but remember, we did have New Snap, and we did an update for it, and we had Unite releasing, and we have a Pokemon Go 5th anniversary, there was a lot of stuff that they wanted to go through, and also they're pretty sure they wanted to do the 25th anniversary thing, and just like the album stuff, or whatever, uh, which they kind of did, it's just been really weird, I don't know what's going on, I don't know if it's been uh, like affected also because of the world situation with everything, if that's affected anything, I don't know, I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Again, I don't really know. There's not really much to go off of there, to be fairly honest with you. But basically, 
that is pretty much that. And also remember, we still do have two hidden videos, by the way, that we don't know anything about. Like some sort of like videos in the Pokemon news and the TCG like, you know, uh, thing imaging. Yeah, I think they're still there, uh, two hidden videos. I might be wrong, but I'm going to check just in case. If there is, yeah, still one unavailable video is hidden, and there is another one here that's also hidden. So there's still hidden videos in the TCG and also in the other section. So again, no clue what that might be about. Basically, we just got like a million things that are just kind of here and there, you know what I mean? There's a million different things, uh, which I don't even know what to where to go with this anymore. Like, it's just like everything and nothing is possible at this point, right? Everything and nothing is possible, and I don't really know what else to say about it. But when it comes to all this, I'm going to just explain this before we get into the Generation 9 rumors. Here's the situation, right? I don't think we're going to get a presents tomorrow. I think that rumor is BS. I think some of the points it makes are pretty good points and pretty good things that should be very nice to see, you know, see in these games and see it happen. On the other hand, though, I want to talk about the other thing here, which is... Where in the world are the piece of info, right? Like, they, they should start churning out by now because they need to get information to us sooner or later because, man, these games are not far away, you know? It's like three and a half months or something until BDSP releases, and then shortly after that, you've got the other game coming out. They kind of got to get the promotional cycle going and get people excited for these games because a lot of people, I've, I'm seeing my own viewers, I've seen people just in general saying that, they don't really care anymore. They haven't even pre-ordered the games. They don't care about the games. They just haven't seen anything about them. They're just like, you know what? I might just wait until after they've come out and after they've released, and then I'll give I'll give two flying butts. You know what I mean? Um, because these are buy to you know buy to play games, not like Unite, which is free, which anyone can try out for free and enjoy fully. These are games that you technically have to buy, so not like it's not going to be the same freedom. Uh, if you know what I mean. But yeah, that's pretty much that. Let's move over to one of the Gen 9 rumors. Now, this was posted a while back. This was also, I mean, in 2021, but this was like what? So January, February, March, April, May. So this is in May posted uh, by th that one guy saying, Pokemon Generation 9, hey, disgruntled employee on the localization team here, ready to spoil some Gen 9 stuff. Should release sometime in third quarter of 2023, which I don't think is true. I think we're getting a Generation 9 next year. That's my own personal prediction. I will do a video why I think that's the case soon, but that's just my personal prediction and what I think. Let's continue on though. Now, new region based on the Mediterranean. Desert with a pyramid. Arena that resembles Pompeii. Battle gimmick revolves around new items, adds stat boosts to Pokemon for either 1, 5, or 10 battles. Overusing items will give a dark aura, which gives Pokemon random stat boosts, but makes them more prone to status effects and gives a 25% chance to ignore commands. That is actually pretty cool of a mechanic, but also that seems extremely broken. Uh, once friendship is maxed, you can give Pokemon a new item called Trust span and after you beat 100 pokemon with new uh, with a new item they gain a light aura which it multiplies the chance of max friendship benefits by one and a half there's a mink uh, mink pokemon which is electric ground and has an ability which uh, makes new items twice as effective okay now prone to stadina this is the same stuff we just read uh, starters are a, are a grass uh, elephant evolves into uh, grass ice mammoth a fire ox that evolves into a fire steel minotaur a water rodent evolves into a water fighting beaver with a mace for a tail, a legendaries uh, are a grass fighting centaur, a poison rock gorgon, and an ice flying uh, Calagrigus. Champion will be the leader of the evil team. First gym will be based on what Pokemon you picked. He starts with a Pokemon weak against you, then one the same as oh wait, then one the same as you, and finally one that's strong against you. After the third gym, one of your rivals steals your badges, and you have to go back and face three different gyms, making eleven gyms. Um, your mother is an ex-elite four member. That actually would be a really cool premise, to be fair. Like, if your actual parent was related somehow to the championship, you know what I mean, and the, the elite four and, like, the league, the Pokemon League. That would be actually pretty cool. Uh, because we have seen, like, your dad being, you know, having some interesting stuff going on, like being a gym leader. But even that was boring back with, like, you know, back in the day with uh, the Pedalburg gym or whatever. Like, that was kind of lame, to be fair. Like, I don't know. He was just kind of, man, I didn't really like him. I mean, he's kind of, kind of a bad father. But I think having a mom that was a former elite four that then decided, you know what? I want to have family now. I'm done with this Pokemon battling stuff. It would just be a cool premise. I don't know, but that's personally what I think. I don't know. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but that's what I personally think. And yeah, that's pretty much it for that rumor. Now, what do I think about this? I'll be honest. I think it is more on the faker side, because mostly because of the the, the time it says release. Now, 2023 does also make sense for Generation Nine, of course. But I do have to be honest, right? That's two years from now, because we're talking at the end, right? The, the end of 20, uh, 2023, right? That's two years that they got to go without anything, right? Like, they, they got to put out something, because I've already said this before. 
But for the new gen for the Pokemon TCG anime and the manga, they need new generations to continue those forward because the anime will not have enough content. They'll just have to take things out of their bum bum, which they already do. They've already used so many plot things they could have gone for, but they're gonna run out of stuff if they don't have like a generation to follow along with, right? Right now, they've utilized Dawn. They've utilized literally even like what? Iris, they've utilized Gary, they've utilized so many things already, right? Lance has been in there for crying out loud. Uh, Corina as well, I think is all like, they've utilized a lot of characters already and things from previous generations. They can't do that forever, okay? They can do it for a while, but they can't do that forever. And I'm pretty sure they can't do that in journeys for a very long time. And also Ash will eventually get to that point in his journey now uh, where he gets to take on the championship and whatnot. That's gonna happen sooner or later. That's gonna happen within the next year or so, I'm pretty sure. I don't think they can keep it going forever like this. You know what I mean? Uh, they, I mean, they can, but they need more content to expand upon it and lengthen it, right? And in this situation, the only way they can do that is with a new generation. Now, imagine this. The only new thing coming out is two Sinnoh games. There is, Sinnoh is not enough to keep the TCG, which needs new Pokemon so they can make new cards, to keep that going for another extra year. Sinnoh is not enough because they're already doing Sinnoh this year and shit, already preparing for that. They can't do that for all of next year. It's just, it's going to be too much at that point. Uh, maybe they will. Maybe they'll try to. I don't know how that's going to go. They might try that, but even merch. Merch, like, sure, you can keep it going, but they, that merch is going to release, you know. You know, it's going to release, and then then that's that's it. You know what I mean? People are going to buy it, or the people that already own it, but it's going to run out. You need new Pokemon, and that's the reason a new generation needs to happen. There needs to be new content to produce other content, right? They need a Pokemon game to then produce brand new Pokemon, which can then be turned into, essentially, in, in layman's terms, new content, right? New cards, new merch, uh, new anime episodes and stuff, new things revolving around that. They kind of need that, okay? They sort of need it. But that's pretty much it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. I've covered all I want to cover in this video. And also, again, uh, shout out to everybody who's answering these comments or these questions of the day. Uh, you already heard the one for today. What is the best rival in Pokemon? Answer it and maybe your comment just like this one because we will feature two comments in this video. Yours will also maybe be featured in the next video. So leave your comment down below. Let's see what your answers are. Who's the best rival? Let me know. And that's it for today's video, guys. Hope you did enjoy. Make sure to subscribe for future videos. My name is Rolf Rallet, and I'll see you all the next time. Peace out, and bye-bye.